Some of America's bravest warriors are returning home wounded. Here's one of them. Uh, my name is Norberto Lara. I served for 11 years in the United States Army. While I was on a combat patrol in Bakaba, Iraq, a rocket propelled grenade took my arm off at the shoulder. When I came home, I felt alone. My family was around me, but I couldn't talk to them about what I'd seen and what I'd done. I remember just thinking, man, the way I am right now, I don't want to live. I was discharged from the Army, and I've been working with the Wounded Warrior Project since 2007. I don't have to be severely wounded to be with the Wounded Warrior Project. I do have a lot of guys that have post-traumatic stress disorder. Being able to share your story, I guess it kind of helps you wrap your mind around what did happen over there. Just because you have left the military doesn't mean your life is over. Because when these guys are coming home, I'm kind of leading and training them in Center for Combat. I'm leading and training them to heal. If I come away with anything from Wounded Warrior Project, it's them giving my life back. My name is Norby, and yes, I do suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, but I'm okay. Don't suffer in silence. Contact Wounded Warrior Project. Hi, I'm John Regan for 4 by Fate. You're listening to Rolling with Dice on 103.5 FM. WCCH, the best place to rock. Yes, it is, and right now it is 8.30, and as promised, John Regan is on the phone with us. Good morning, John. Buongiorno, Eduardo. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. I'm just, uh, I'm just, hang on. I'm mixing up a little Sambuca here in my coffee. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> all right, let me take a sip. I'm ready to go. Are you ready? It's almost like Cafe Italia, but on a Friday. That's it, but it's uh, Cafe Eduardo. <laughs> <laughs> Cafe Eduardo. I like that. I like that. So, everybody, John is co-founding member of a band called Four by Fate, and they have a new CD coming out on June 3rd. I got my grubby hands on a copy already, and we're going to hear some uh, music from them. It's phenomenal. John, this yeah. band, you, you reunited with um, an old bandmate of yours, uh, Todd Howarth. You guys have a long history together. Yeah, this is our, actually, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary uh, as friends and fellow musicians. I met Todd while I was out on the road with John Waite uh, of uh, Missing You fame, and Todd was playing keyboards and singing with uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees Cheap Trick. So we did a co-headlining tour, and we hit it off personally and musically, and... Uh, you know, invited Todd to join Fraley's Comet. We spent a couple of years uh, doing that, and now uh, we got some great new music. I, I couldn't be more proud and excited to be working with my my friend Todd Howard again. He's a spectacular person, but you you played with many many artists and bands through throughout your uh, career. Anything that really sticks out? Oh, man, I, Eddie, I, I, I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams. I never, you know, I thought this little chubby kid from Wappingers Falls, New York, would end up uh, sharing the stage and, and, the, and the recording studio with uh, with the, the folks that I got to work with. Um, they all stand out in their own particular way, but I have to say one uh, really, it, it, it was kind of tough to top. Uh, you, you know, you, you, you keep working and working, and then, one day, if you're lucky, something happens, and it's like, wow, am I ever going to get this feeling again? And that happened in 1985 when uh, one of my favorite record producers in the history of music, Mr. Nile Rogers, uh, got a hold of me to uh, replace a bass track that had already been cut. They had some issues with the, the original one. They wanted a new bass track, and he invited me into the studio. He said, there's no money in this. Uh, it's for this charity called Live Aid. And I said, well, I'm in. You know, you're calling Nile. I'll be right there. So I got into the city. Uh, I found out it was for um, David Bowie, the late David Bowie, and Mick Jagger's version of Dancing in the Streets really? for Live Aid. And uh, I got into the recording studio, and Nile was there, and they put the track up, turned it up as loud as we could in the control room, and in walking behind me is Mick Jagger and uh, I just I was pinching myself I just remember they hit record it was honestly it was the only time I ever recorded something in one take and between concentrating on recording and and catching in my peripheral vision Mick Jagger dancing around with the joy of a child on Christmas morning was surreal and I I also realized at that point why Mick is Mick uh, what you see on stage that's that's him that he still has that joyful love 
for, for rock and roll and for music. It was a lesson, and it was a, a day I'll never forget. Man, that's 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 phenomenal. It, him just being there and the, and you you having the appreciation for him and him turning around and and dancing and having that appreciation for you, it, it must be a surreal feeling. Yeah, it, again, you know, it, it was. I walked out of that studio and I immediately got on the phone to my wife and I said, you're not going to believe what just happened. Uh, it, it definitely is one of the, the if, if not the high point, one of them in a, a very fortunate career that I've had. I actually remember that you know, uh, when everything was going, there was Live Aid and then uh, right after that there was uh, Farm Aid and Hearing Aid. It, you know, everybody remember, <laughs> remember, rem, yeah, remember, remember all those back back in the great '80s when when yeah. when the, when the music was uh, great. And I'm seeing the music scene making a comeback. Those bands from the uh, '80s, there, those bands are either coming out with a uh, a new lineup or they're reemerging and with an attitude. Do you see that coming back? I do, and you know what? We better really, uh, you know, from uh, from your lips to God's ears, that that really needs to happen because we're at a critical point right now where at some point, uh, who knows, in the next 50 years, the Stones may stop touring, you know, and Aerosmith and, uh, you know, McCartney, the legends will, will basically just call it a day for various reasons. And uh, I was a little concerned that perhaps... You had a gap in the 80s and 90s of bands that didn't have that staying power. Uh, and then once those, you know, the, the old guard were gone, we we're going to have a pretty uh, dire situation in, in listening to good music. But you're absolutely right. I'm seeing the exact same thing. There's a resurgence. You know, Duran Duran is back out. Uh, you know, different, various bands from that era. And they're, uh, they're going to carry the torch you know, into this 21st century, hopefully. And you're right, there is a resurgence, and I'm glad to see it. There's going to be a resurgence. There's another band that's out there that's surging. It's called Four by Fate. We're going to be talking about them a little bit later. But right now... I, I, I never heard of those guys. It you, must be new. I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you to them. So, oh, great. But, I'd love to meet them. <laughs> you, we were talking. <laughs> we were talking about uh, the David Bowie, Mick Jagger, the late, great David Bowie, Mick Jagger's version of... Dancing in the Street. You played on it. I have it queued up. Can I play it? Oh, absolutely. What a way to start the day. I love it. Okay, here we go. John Regan featured on bass with Mick Jagger and the late, great David Bowie. Dancing in the Street. You're listening to WCCH 103.5.
That was Dancing in the Streets by the late, great David Bowie and legendary Mick Jagger and John Regan on the bass. And on the phone is John Regan. Good morning. Uh, good morning. I tell you, listening to that, Eddie, I, 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 was, I was dancing around here in my nightgown. I, I felt <laughs> like uh, Ebenezer Scrooge uh, on, on Christmas morning. <laughs> you're, definitely, you're definitely not a Scrooge. But... Like you, you did that for a live aid. You you did a lot, lot in your in your career in, that is still still thriving. And while you were off the air, we were talking about your um your time with uh Peter Frampton. You spent a lot oh, of time yeah. with Peter. Yeah. You can uh, tell us a little about the the experiences with Peter Frampton. Oh man, where do I start? I uh. I, I first got the call uh, from the late Bobby Mayo, dear friend, uh, in uh, September of 1979. They needed a bass player, and uh, literally they needed a bass player on 48 hours' notice. So I got a call from my buddy Joe Renda, crazy Joe Renda, uh, on the studio down in Westchester called North Lake Sound, and I went down there. He said, listen... Peter Frampton needs a bass player. He called me up and I said, "Yeah, really? Now what do you want? That can't be real." He goes, "No, he needs a bass player. You got to get down here and meet Bobby. Pick up the records. Uh, if you want the gig, you got to, you know, woodshed, learn the material." So I got in my car, drove an hour down to White Plains, met Bobby. He handed me a stack of records with, uh, and a, and a, a two-hour set list. And he goes, "This is a Wednesday night." He goes, "You got to be ready on Friday." I said, "You got it," because Opportunity doesn't like that doesn't knock very often. So came right. home, I uh, had my wife put on a giant pot of coffee and literally stayed up for two days, uh, Wednesday night, Thursday, early Friday, learning this material that I was not that familiar with, to be honest with you. I was more familiar with Peter from Humble Pie. And uh, learned the material. I figured, okay, I'm at least going to get a little rehearsal, a sound check. That was not the case. Uh, we met up in Pennsylvania. Uh, for a show, walked in to the arena, onto the stage, and that began a 30-year uh, collaboration and, and deep friendship with Peter Frampton. And we worked um, most of 31 years together from uh, 1979 to 2010. Wow. What, what, what did it for you, John? What, what did you hear that said, man, I'm picking up that bass guitar? What? Why did I play bass guitar? Yeah, who was it? Who was your influence? That you know, was it a band oh that you God. heard? Well, you here's know? what happened. I, I was playing. I actually started out uh, playing tenor saxophone, and then uh, in high school, I was in a high school band, and they needed a baritone sax. I switched over to baritone, and uh, I absolutely loved that low, that low thickness and and, and sweet sound of a baritone sax. Uh, and I, I was in a marching band, and, you know, but I, they got pretty tiring carrying around this giant piece of metal. Uh, but I was just really a Jerry Mulligan follower for baritone sax. Well, as luck would have it, uh, I, I, my hair was getting a little too long for my father's liking, and he <laughs> gave me one of those ultimatums, go get your damn haircut, kid. So in doing so, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of 
running down to the barber there, and it was ice on the street. I slipped, fell, broke my leg, and my right leg, and that was pretty much in a cast for a month or two, and I couldn't play saxophone. So my buddy, who was a bass player, lent me a bass guitar. And I sat down, and I could actually sit it on my lap and, and plunk away on it. And I remember putting on the Young Rascals album, and the first song I learned on bass was Mustang Sally. <laughs> and you know what? From that point, the baritone sax went in the case, and I never looked back. But as far as inspirations, you know, where do you start? You have, obviously, McCartney. Uh, Bill Wyman from the Stones, was a, he's an unsung hero. He doesn't get the recognition and the credit he deserves for coming up with the inventive bass parts that he did. Absolutely. But it runs the gamut. One of my biggest influences, honestly, was Ronnie Wood when he was playing bass with the Jeff Beck group. Uh, the, the Truth album and the Beck Ola album, I wore those things through to the other side, mm -hmm. learning every part that, that Ronnie Wood, trying to learn every part Ronnie Wood played. Um, then what? you got Entwistle. Chris Squire was a huge, huge influence on me, and still is to this day. Uh, we, we had uh, the uh, honor to tour with them, with Frampton, and yes, in 2010, and I got to sit by the side of the stage every night, and just, I, I was in awe listening and watching Chris Squire play. And unfortunately, we lost him uh, too soon as well. Right. Uh, but, you know, the, James Jamerson, all of the Motown stuff. Uh, and Carol Kay from the Wrecking Crew. You know, he, I, I tried to listen to every style of music and play every style of music because if it's good, it's good. Uh, I don't believe in, in compartmentalizing yourself into one style of music. And, like... James Jamerson, he was he was just he was just a monster with the with the Motown scene. He he was practically on every album, you know. Yeah, he, he, yeah and, and then and then after him, Bob Babbitt. But if you you go online, the beauty of uh, of technology now, you can go on Google right now or YouTube. I mean, and and just punch in James Jamerson isolated bass tracks, and you just listen to the bass track to all those Motown songs, and it's like listening to a one man symphony. Absolutely stunning, you know. And the same thing, you put in John Entwistle isolated bass tracks. It'll blow your mind because in the mix of the song, you don't hear a lot of the nuances. When you hear them separately like that, it's just, it's, it's inspiring. Uh, sometimes I listen to it and I want to just cut my fingers off and give up. But <laughs> more, impor more importantly, it's inspiring. You know, that, that's the main thing. So if you had to, if you had to pick, um, say... A fun tune or one of your favorite tunes by um, Peter Frampton that you played on, what would it be? Well, one of the ones I'm really, really proud of, and this this also uh, ties in with David Bowie, because David, uh, David Bowie and Peter grew up together. Uh, actually, Frampton's father was David's teacher uh, over in uh, in London, and they remained friends, you know, till the end. And David was the one that urged Peter to do an instrumental record. You know, because Peter's, the crux of his fame, for better or for worse, was on his looks and a pop star. But he is a spectacular guitar player. Trust me, I listened to him for 30 years, 31 years, and he would play solos that never repeated themselves on songs that he'd been playing for three decades. Blew my mind. So David urged Peter to do an instrumental record. So we went and did an album called Fingerprints back in 2006. And lo and behold, it won Peter and everyone on that record a Grammy for Best Pop Instrumental Album in the year 2006. And the opening track is one that Peter and I co-wrote. It's called Boot It Up. And it's just a fun track. And if, that, if this track doesn't get people going when they listen to it, I don't know what will. Hey, and guess what? I have that booted up right now. So we're going to be listening to that off of Peter Frampton's Fingerprints album, boot it up. You're listening to WCCH 103.5.
Oh, yeah, that was Peter Frampton's instrumental Grammy-winning album from Fingerprints that was booted up with John Regan on the bass, and he's still on the phone with us. Good morning, John. Morning. Got a little bit of funk going on there and booted up, man. man Got to get the funk out once in a while. Man, <laughs> I, that, now, how how much, you know, you're... you're um, a, a, more or less like a rock basis and all that. When you go out and do something like this, is it fun? I mean, I know you're more you're versatile and and like all genres of music and all that. How fun was that album to play on? That was an absolute gas because we weren't we were not making that record. That record was made basically for us, and we just set out with one objective to go in the studio and have a great time. And, it, you know, it's, it's like the gambler that goes to Vegas needing to win. You're not going to win. We just went in and made that record uh, to enjoy ourselves. And as in anything in life, if you're enjoying yourself or what you're doing, other people are going to enjoy themselves. And that was, it was, it was a great time. You know, amazing musicians on that record. That this, this, you know, Peter had... Uh, Bill Wyman and Charlie Watts reunited for the first time uh, since uh, Bill had left the band. It was the first time they played together uh, since Bill left the Rolling Stones on that record. I believe the track's called Cornerstones. And there's just so much, just so many great guest appearances on that record. And, you know, I was so happy for Peter that he won as a musician because I know, I know how amazing he is as, as a player. That that's that's fantastic, and you you got the recognition too. But let's get down to the nitty gritty here. I've been dying for this for two years. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, that dozen cannolis I sent up last night was that it? <laughs> uh, we're talking about four by fate. Oh, that uh, those guys again? You're talking about those guys? I, I always talk about these guys, but this time <laughs> I got my hands on some actual music. Man, John, this album is phenomenal. Thank you, Eddie. We, you, you've been you've been there from the beginning with us, and as you know, it was a, a little rough road, but uh, you know we stayed true to course, and 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 with you know support from you and from uh, Mitch Lafon, uh, Sue Newman, the Weebles. I, you know, it, it goes on. You guys carried us through some tough times to, to get to the finish line in this, and. And we really do want to thank you all very much. Well, first of all, I just want to say uh, thank you for the kind words on the inside of the um, album, album Leaf. The album is due out June 3rd. You can pre-order it on Amazon and 4 com. But you're going to be able to hear um, three tunes off it here exclusively on WCCH. You already have a, a pretty good history with this band already, and... The album's barely released yet. It, tell us a yeah, little, little. We're lucky. We're getting a lot of great response just on on the the, the couple things that have kind of snuck out. <laughs> <laughs> how how did Four by Fate start? Well, Four by Fate started uh, about two years ago uh, when uh, I happened to be on the internet, which unfortunately I spent too much time on Facebook, <laughs> but that's another story. And I happened to see. Uh, a project going on, a Kiss tribute record that was being done by our dear friend Mitch Lafon up in Canada. Mitch is one of the premier Canadian rock journalists, and I'm, I'm, I was reading what he was doing, and, and this project was to benefit uh, Canadian hospitals and hospice research and that type of stuff. And you know, um, sadly, uh, a lot of us have had situations where we dealt with hospice with our loved ones and they are angels on earth so in seeing that I said well, you know what I had I had pretty much kind of retired at that point uh, I said to myself let me get a hold of Mitch and offer my services because it was a really noble project and the music was great so I sent him a, a message on Facebook and he got back to me and he said sure we'd love to have you uh, involved and I ended up working on I think four tracks for that record but at one point, we decided, why don't we try to do uh, a Fraley's Comet record? Because it's all part of the KISS family. That's the amazing thing about KISS fans. Uh, and I have to say, they are the best fans in the world, bar none 
that I have met, and I've met a lot of different artists' fan base. Uh, uh, once once you're in that family, you're in. So Fraley's Comet was obviously a uh, an offshoot of the Kiss family, and we decided to perhaps cut Breakout because it's selfish. That was one. Of, that was probably my favorite one to play live on stage with Ace and Fraley's Comet for the four or five years that we toured together. And I said, there's only one thing. we got to get Todd Howard to sing it because he sang it on the record. <laughs> and uh, we put a message in to Todd, and he was up for it. And lo and behold, we cut it. Uh, Todd played everything, sang everything. I think Kevin Valentine played drums. So it was basically a, a three-piece band on the track that you hear on the uh, this compilation called A World with Heroes. Uh, and it came out. And Mitch started getting uh, inquiries if Todd and I would want to put a band together. Said, well, we've always wanted to do another project after Fratley's Comet. I didn't realize it was going to take almost a quarter of a century to come to pass. But I called Todd up and I said, look, what are, you, want, you, want to, you want to do this? He said, yeah. I said, well, look, let me, let me contact someone who I trust explicitly. And that's Danny Stanton. And Danny has been working with us. Since I've known Danny since the Frailix Comet days as well. Uh, probably one of the hardest working men in show business and just a dear, dear friend. They said, Danny, what do you think of this concept? Do you think anyone would be interested, even slightly? And he said, well, let me, let me make a few phone calls. And he got back to me. He goes, yeah, there's some interest. I said, well, it's just Todd and I. We need to, uh, unless we want to go out with, you know, do a, a Milly Vanilli thing, uh, and we don't. <laughs> so who do you got? So he suggested Stet Howland, an uh, amazing drummer who was living in Florida. Uh, he was with Wasp and with Lita Ford and I'm sure a bunch of others that I don't know about. Yep, you're right, Heap. And, yeah. So then we got a three-piece band, and we needed a guitar player. And Mitch basically chimed in and said, how about Sean Kelly, uh, a fellow Canadian who had a band called Helix and was playing with Nelly Furtado. And I said, well, put me on to him. We had a chat with Sean and... And I absolutely love that that lad. He's a, a wonderful, wonderful guy. That became the first incarnation of Four by Fate uh, to do. A f we did a couple live shows in New York, and then we did uh, the uh, Alcatraz Festival over in Belgium uh, in 2014. So it, it was great. And then next step was to get ready to go into the studio. So, from from there, um, you had um, uh, there was a, a Kiss convention in uh, New Jersey. Well, and, yeah, we're, we had the Todd came up with six killer songs, and that was to be the first half of the record, because uh, we were self-funding it. So we were just basically, you know, we could only do a, a bit at a time. Uh, after we did, like, you know, Todd and I both set up lemonade stands to make money and car washes, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but, no kidding aside, uh, we decided to uh, cut these first six tracks. Uh, um, we were scheduled to go into the studio. Uh, two days before that, Todd and I were invited to attend a KISS convention in New Jersey, and we were having a, a grand old time meeting our, 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 fa our friends and uh, fans from the Fraley's Comet days. And uh, Sue Noman, uh, uh, a personal friend of all of ours, yep. came up with this, like, looked like she saw a ghost. She had her phone in her hand, and she said, look at this Facebook post. And there's a picture of Stet in a hospital bed wearing, like, you know, one of those things when a dog gets an operation, you have to put the cone of shame around him. Well, he's, like, laid up in a bed. He had gotten a very, very bad automobile accident. He got rear-ended. His whole family was hurt. He was in a hospital. We didn't even get, weren't able to even contact him. We didn't know what was going on with him. So all this, Todd is in. The studio is booked and paid for. Uh, you know, Todd flew in from, from California. We had six songs to cut. So, again, I get on the phone uh, to our commander, Danny Stanton, and I basically said, Danny, you're not going to believe what just happened. we got to record these songs. Do you have a drummer? He goes, I can only think of one. They can do the job that's local, uh, and that is A.J. Perro. Uh, and I said, well, I, I'm familiar with A.J. from Twisted Sister, but I'm not really familiar with him other than that. They said, let me call you back. So thanks to uh, 
the digital age we're in, I, I went in the back room there at the KISS convention, and I, I pulled up, uh, I just typed A.J. Perro in the Google, and up came uh, an amazing performance that he had just done, I think a few weeks before at Bonzo Bash. And when I heard, when I heard that, I called Danny back and said, please, see if A.J. wants to do it. So got a hold of A.J., he was up for it. He was in New Jersey, we were in New York. We decided to uh, uh, go forward, and we sent, Todd sent him the tunes. So, you know, it was, it was kind of like what happened with me with Frampton. He had like a day and a half to learn this stuff. Right. Uh, so, uh, we're, so Todd and I get to the studio. We got there early. We're, you know, we're like, now we're kind of shell shocked, to be honest with you. We didn't, we're blindsided by this whole thing. We're like, wow, what, what's, what's happening here? So we get in there. My phone rings. It's AJ. He goes, you're not going to believe it. I just left the house. I got like two blocks in a house. I got in a car accident. I got rear-ended. Huh. This can't be ha This can't be happening. He goes, but I'm okay. I said, well, thank God. That's the main thing anyway. I said, he said, but my car is toast. I said, I will send the limo for you. So we sent a car down for AJ. He got to the studio about three hours after he was supposed to. And then we just sat down. He sat down behind that drum kit, and he absolutely just blew us away. Uh, I can still close my eyes and see that big smile, and 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 I can hear that that just he he attacked these songs like like he he'd lived with them for the last two years. Uh, what a what a great testament, and it's just the fact that it's the last six songs that he recorded, and it's with us. I, I can't even tell you. Sometimes I get choked up listening to it. Uh, right. You know, he was. It, it, it's we lost him way too soon, as we've lost so many, especially recently. Yeah, it's it's been uh, quite crazy with the uh, losses of um, all these musicians lately. So what we're yeah. gonna do is we're gonna play a PSA and uh, we're gonna play a cut off this Relentless CD, and it's gonna be called Moonshine. Are you up for that? Was that a reference to my Sambuca intake this morning? Or is, is this an <laughs> no, alcohol that, reference? But I, of course I'm in for it. I love this track. Okay, awesome. Here we go. We're going to do a quick PSA. We're coming back with a debut of 4 by Fate. You listen to WCCH 103.5. Take care, Grandma. Okay, baby. Don't forget to let me know the second you get there. Yes, ma'am. My grandson always tells me I worry about him too much. And of course I do. I'm his grandma. Well, I was worried sick when he came home from Afghanistan. He came back wounded. It wasn't a wound you could see. It was a wound inside. Post-traumatic stress disorder. My T couldn't sleep. He was angry all the time. He felt like he didn't fit in anywhere. Then I heard about this group, Wounded Warrior Project. People helping warriors like T. So I figured who better to help my grandson than people who could understand what he'd been through. Now I don't know what they do there, but my tea is smiling again. So I figured they must be good people. One out of every five warriors return from the battlefield with post-traumatic stress disorder. Help support them at WoundedWarriorProject.org. Hi, I'm John Regan for 4 by Fate. You're listening to Rolling with Dice on 103.5 FM. WCCH, the best place to rock. To take me down, down, down.
Oh, yeah, that was Moonshine. One of the first cuts off of Relentless, 4 by Fate. On the phone with us is John Regan. John, killer tune. Thank you, Eddie. And that's, that's, uh, that's uh, our newest band member, uh, the, the legendary Rob Afuso of Skid Row fame, pounding those skins and banging on that cowbell. There's never enough cowbell. You need, always need more cowbell. <laughs> Oh, absolutely love it. So we earlier we were just we were just talking about um, AJ Perro came in. Um, you 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 lost Stet Holland to a, a a car accident during your first six recordings. AJ came in and uh, filled in uh, on the first six songs, and unfortunately AJ died uh, last year with his band Adrenaline Mob, and that that hit you guys very hard. Yeah, well, what happened was, again, we didn't know what was going on with Stet. We finished the first six tracks, and now it's like, all right, we need continuity. We, we need we need to do the next six, finish the record. And we asked AJ, because it went so, I mean, it was just, it was seamless. It, it, and within five minutes, you know, you're a bass player, Eddie. Within, yep. You know within minutes whether, whether a drummer is just going to click with you and it, it took me about 30 seconds to know that uh, this, the rhythm section was was really powerful and we asked him to join the band and he did now, AJ was going to be part of the band and then uh, I was over in the UK touring with Billy J. Kramer and I had asked Todd right before I left you know Todd do me a favor just uh, get in touch with AJ let him know Right as soon as I get back, we're headed into the studio to uh, to finish this record up. So Todd uh, got back to me. Yeah, AJ Key can't wait. He's excited. Um, and lo and behold, uh, but probably 24 hours after that, I get a text from Todd that AJ had suddenly passed away, and I I, I can't even I still don't believe it. Uh, but it, it was it was tough, a tough tough time. Um, you know, and in the interim between that. Uh, Sean Kelly uh, was up in Canada and a little rough for him to get in and out of America with work visas and stuff to be working with us so he put down some great guitar on uh, on the first six tracks and a couple of the songs but then he really decided it wasn't going to be able feasible for him to continue on so what we did is we uh, got a hold of Pat Gasparini who had an amazing band called Pound and Flywheel in the 90s and he, Pat, actually was the writer uh, of one of the songs that we cut in the first six with AJ called Follow Me. And uh, I had put some bass on it for Pat. And then when, when we finished the track, I said, this sounds like wh what 4 by Fate is about. So I said, do you mind if I send this to Todd? So we sent it to Todd, and that's how we decided to cut it uh, in the first half of the album. Uh, but then when we needed a guitar player, it was a natural progression to ask, Pat to join the band. So, uh, Pat contributed uh, five more songs, uh, four or five more songs for the completion of the Relentless record. And so that's the band as it stands now. Pat Gasparini on guitars and vocals, along with Todd uh, and Rob Afuso on drums. So that's Four by Fate as of April 30th, 2016, <laughs> at about 9:15. <9 :15. laughs> so last week. You had um, an exclusive um, CD listening party and somewhat of a pre pre release, and um, set up an acoustic style. And um, unfortunately, Rob was um, sick; he 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 couldn't attend. Uh, Pat ended up uh, playing, and you guys, you you mentioned that there's going to be a second uh, Four by Fate album. I mean, we hope so. I mean, Pat and Todd are, are songwriting machines, and Pat never stops. He, I don't know how he does it. He's got he's got a very very successful uh, uh, salon business here in the Hudson Valley of New York, and the man just has energy beyond bounds, and knows no bounds. But he's constantly writing and sending material to Todd and I, and everything he sends is like it, that's better than the last one. So. We're deep into into writing for the second album already, but the key to that's going to be uh, hopefully some some folks are going to pick up the first one, and then the record accompanies 
who, by the way, we've got a, we are working with a label in the United States called The End Records that uh, is just, I, I couldn't be happier about it. it. It's a record label in the, in the best sense of the old-fashioned record labels where it's not just corporate. Uh, Andreas, uh, the owner of the label, really genuinely cares about the artist and what he puts out on the records, uh, on, the, on his label. And it reminds me of the old days of Barry Gordy with Motown and, and Ahmed Erdogan uh, with Atlantic Records. It's a great home, and, and we couldn't be more thrilled. And then in the U.K., Europe, and Scandinavia, we're on another great label called Amazing Records. So anybody over there that needs to get the record, that's where it will be coming from. So um, the U.K. release is, uh, is it May 6th, I believe? Uh, you know what? I should know, but I'm sorry to say I don't. I believe... The, the release are, is simultaneous, June 3rd June. Uh, in America and the U.K., but pre, pre-orders are, are available now, and I, I don't know whether they're going to be putting out uh, little three-song EPs uh, to, uh, before June 6th. So right now we're going to give Stay a... tuned to the 4 by Fate Facebook page or uh, 4xFate.com. That, a lot of times, that's where I find out what's going on. <laughs> so we're going to give everybody a taste of um, the songwriting and uh, playing of uh, Pat Gasparini right now with the song that you just mentioned, "Follow Me." So you're listening. To yeah, that- one, of, one of my favorites. It, you know, it it just when, when the whole band kicks in, it just. Uh, it, it, it's it's cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, this song's killer, and everybody's going to enjoy it. So here's another exclusive here at WCCH 103.5, 4 by Fate, Follow Me.
yeah, follow me. Written by Patrick James. That was Four by Fate. John Regan still on the phone. John, fantastic album, fantastic tune. Thanks for letting me play these. Uh, it's, it's our pleasure. You can me play it away, Eddie. The, the more, the merrier. <laughs> so I love that track. It's one of my favorites as well. So. The whole album is one of my favorites, you know. And <laughs> you, you, yeah, can, you can ask the, the handful of people to actually have this album now that um, we were able to get a hold of this uh, last Saturday or at your um, release party. Um, yeah, the, I, there's nothing but great reviews so far. I know Mitch uh, Lafon, you talked about him earlier. He he had a uh, copy sent to him before all this was. Um, done and he uh, he thought the album was already phenomenal before we even got to your release party so that made uh, you guys you guys are very kind all i could say is and through, through the the trials and tribulations we it, it, it's still the joy of of playing music with your friends comes through this record and you know what uh, being over in england last year doing uh it was like the 50th anniversary of the British invasion. I was with Billy J. Kramer. There's a band, the Mersey Beats. Uh, uh, there were so many great bands from Liverpool. And I got to sit in, in, the, in the green room with them every night for six weeks and listen to the stories. And these guys are in their 70s, and they're still, when they get up on stage, they still have the joy of a teenager. And when I was talking to them about it, and, and they said, look, in Liverpool, when, we, when this whole thing started, we were just garage bands. We were just kids that were trying to get a hold of the music that came over from America. And I learned something, and I, you may or may not know this. The reason Liverpool became the hotbed of all of the rock bands, the Beatles and, and Herman's Hermits and all that stuff, mm -hmm. is because that was the main seaport in England from America. So Little Richard, all the blues records, they landed on British shores in Liverpool before anywhere else. And the kids oh. got a hold of them, and that's how all those bands started. It was an amazing experience to be over there. And I said, it's funny. You were trying to be like American music, and then when you guys did it, we all got inspired and were trying to be like you. So it really is universal, and, and music makes it, The whole idea is to make you feel good and bring people together. And if we accomplish that, that's, then we have success as far as I'm concerned. And success, indeed, it does bring a lot of people. We do have our friends by fate, as you know, and now, you know, we have our little group of family by fate just because of you guys and the music that you write. Well, uh, it, it means a lot to us, and I know uh, I know everybody's listening. I know John Bailey's listening in. Uh, I, I, I know Sue Newman's listening in. I, she probably took a day off work. <laughs> and if it, if we can get Weebles, Sir Weebles, out of bed, I, I hear he's been up to like four or five o'clock, <laughs> shredding along to the new, uh, the Relentless album, and really bothering his neighbors. He he actually said, if you need, anytime you need someone as a backup guitarist, he's there. He can do it. So. Uh oh, did, uh oh, wait a minute. This is it. Uh, so we're already starting a rumor here. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> but who will be the next to leave? Uh, no. I tell you what. We're up to drummer number three, so this is getting spinal tapish, and uh, uh, I don't know if uh, I don't know if I'd want to audition for that position in the band. <laughs> well, of course everybody would want to, but let's keep it all the same as it is right now. I would hope so. <laughs> we, uh, keeping everything nice and calm is what I live for. So nice and calm. Let's digress a little bit here. You have a radio show in uh, in the Hudson Valley called Cafe Italia. You can tell yes, us. Yes, you you know about that. Wow. Absolutely, I actually I actually listened to it. Can you tell ah, us? I love it. Can you tell us a little bit about Cafe Italia and uh, your your boys there on Sunday morning? Well, it, it again, music is universal. I remember my grand. I'm I'm 100% Sicilian. I know the name sounds Irish, but if I tell you the story, I got to kill you. So we won't go there this morning. Uh, but I remember my grandmother, as most Italian family, she lived upstairs from us. And I would go up as a child and listen to uh, WNEW. And it was like William B. Williams with uh, Sinatra and Tony Bennett and all of the, the great American songbook. And I guess uh, I would just watch her and see how happy she was when that music was on. 
And I think inadvertently that's what really drove me to the career path that I ended up on uh, because music gives people a lot of joy and happiness. Uh, so fast forward about four years ago, I had just joined the Joe DiMaggio Lodge of the Sons of Italy uh, here in the Hudson Valley. And, you know, you join, they try to, uh, you're a musician. Uh, this guy, Vincenzo Lombardi, uh, he's a, uh, a policeman down in Westchester, uh, but he loves music. So they, they, they introduced us so we you know, have something in common. So I started talking to him out in the parking lot as I was leaving, and he, I've never met any human being with so much passion for American, Italian American, and the great American songbook, and so much knowledge. Uh, so we started talking, he goes, yeah, my, my family had you know, records, and, and they were in the business. He goes, I've got over 100,000 records uh, in my catalog, <laughs> personal catalog. I said, are you kidding me? Then he starts telling me the stories behind the songs, and I'm, I'm, my mind is reeling. I'm in heaven listening to these stories, but simultaneously I'm going, this has to get out of this parking lot. You know, somebody needs to, to, to hear Vinny's passion and his knowledge. So I approached a good friend of mine at uh, 1450 WKIP, uh, part of the iHeart radio group here in the Hudson Valley, uh, Chuck Benford. I said, Chuck, you got to trust me on this. Give us an hour a week, uh, and we're going to get Vinny and I on there, and we're just going to have some fun and play music that no one, a lot of it, no one's ever heard. I try to stump him every week. I said, okay, yeah, you got Italian music? Give me the Rolling Stones in Italian. What does he come up with? As Tears Go By, by the Stones, with Jagger singing in Italian. And every week he brings in these he, chestnuts. It's, it boggles my mind. So it's a one-hour show every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. In the Hudson Valley of New York, it's on 1450 a.m., but it's available all around, anywhere in the known world, on 1450wkip.com, Sundays at 11 a.m. And now that I know uh, Eddie's always with us, uh, we're going to uh, we're gonna have to step the game up a little bit. But we invite you all to join us. It's, it's the music and the memories of, of your life. It, it makes you, it, again, I keep coming back to this, it makes you feel good. And that's exactly what uh, we're all about and what I'm all about in my life. We're all on this ride together. Might as well have a good time. And talking about making people feel good, about a year ago um, I was chatting with uh, you guys, um, you and Todd, um, um, exclusively. Um, I was trying to uh, set up a veteran ceremony here at uh, HCC, Hoyle Community College, and at the same time, you came up with the idea of doing a special broadcast of Cafe Italia for our local Holyoke Soldiers Home for the uh, residents up there, which kicked off a fantastic week here in our area. So your Cafe Italia show and connection with HCC does have a pretty strong bond That on that November 1st, that Sunday, you had one show dedicated to the veterans of the Holyoke Soldiers Home. We ended up getting the names of some residents, and they made some song dedications. And it didn't matter what song or who it was by, you guys played them and showed them homage. And it was, I was there, we were um, the uh, veterans from HCC and uh, Psi Beta were there helping out the uh, during during their lunch hour where they were playing this and there was nothing but gratitude and smiles on their faces especially when they heard their names being called in the songs that they requested how how does that make you feel when when something like that happens well Eddie first of all I know how tirelessly you work for the veterans and I want to thank you for number one your service to the country and for what you do for for them, uh, and a lot of them are of the generation, the greatest generation. Uh, my dad was a veteran, may he rest in peace. All my uncles, uh, you know, out of, out, of, out of the same family, I think six of them were in the service during World War II at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they all served so that we can have the freedoms that we enjoy. And 
to know that, that they appreciated it. it was, first of all, it was our absolute honor uh, to put that show together for them. Um, it, it, how does it make you feel? It, 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 it just it chokes you up, chokes me up a little bit, but it also fills your heart with uh, with gratitude that maybe we we gave them back just so, a little something compared to the sacrifices. Uh, some of them made the ultimate sacrifices, so many, but those that are still with us uh, to honor them gave us more pleasure than I can tell you. It was a wonderful day in the history of Cafe Italia, one I'll never forget. The, like you said, the greatest generation, they are losing them at a phenomenal rate. Um, the, that, the generation is soon going to be gone, these... these uh, brave men and women that went out and uh, served the country and absolutely saved us from um, disaster. It was going to be a disaster. They went out there and did what they needed to do so we can have what we have today. And Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. we invited them. Now, the second part of the story, which relates to you and For By Fate, is the next day... Todd Howard, your front man for 4 by Fate, flew out here to HCC to perform the next song that we're going to play, which is my favorite song off the album. Yes, I'm going to be biased on this whole thing. Because this is this is something I heard. Um, I was searching the internet. Here's, here's the story. I was a big Comet fan. When I heard... Freely's comment for the first time. I put put the record on. I heard Rock Soldiers. I heard the beat, and I'm like, oh man, I'm I'm sold. The next song I believe was a uh, Breakout, and I'm like, wow, who is this guy singing? I go, this yeah. is this is phenomenal. <laughs> a, a guy actually on the album that is going to actually help out Ace singing, you know. And it was a great mix, and I'm like, who is this guy? I found him. I became a Todd Howarth fan right then and there. So, I, after the military and all that, um, Fraley's comment obviously disbanded. And I'm, I'm searching the, um, the internet. I'm going through YouTube, and I'm like, whatever happened to um, Todd? You know. So, I, I start YouTube, and I catch some stuff, and I came across this um, uh, YouTube video called Amber Waves my allegiance and i played that and i'm like i cried and it was everything that i felt and i know my friends then people who served with me and prior and those who are going to be serving after us are going to have the same feeling this song just knocked it right out of the park I sent him a message and let him know that, and that's how our relationship started. That was uh, a few years, as a matter of fact, I think it uh, was um, you guys were flying back from a KISS convention, and you had a emergency landing. Oh, yeah, we, we got stuck in Halifax. Three days, three days in Halifax. I think Todd's writing a new song about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's when I, I uh, actually reached out to Todd, and um, our friendship there began, and get back to he flew out here to perform this song for the veterans and we brought this was the biggest veteran ceremony hcc has ever put on we had the soldiers home come here so we played in front of every generation of veterans that we were able to do we had the patriot guard riders here they came on their motorcycles they lined up the uh the uh, ceremony with flags and everything, and this is this is what this song is all about. So, no further ado, may I play this song? Absolutely, it's uh, it's one of my favorites as well, Eddie, for all the same reasons. Okay, quick little ID, and then the debut of the full band version of Four by Fate's Amber Waves. Hi, this is Todd Howard from 4 by Fate, and you are listening to Dice on 103.5 FM WCCH.
I joined because I wanted to contribute to something bigger than myself. On my first patrol, my adrenaline was pumping. I knew it would be tough, but I was ready for the challenge. Always on high alert. After a while, it takes a toll. I was counting the days that I came home to my family. Finally, the day arrived. It was good to be home at first, but then I realized things were different. I was different. I had trouble focusing and relating to things the way I used to. Then a buddy noticed something wasn't right. He said he'd been there, that there are resources out there for veterans. I decided to reach out. I found resources that helped and connected with other veterans who had similar experiences. Once I started making connections, things began to turn around. There may still be bumps in the road, but now I know where to turn. Find resources and support at maketheconnection.net. You're back with Dice. It's 9.35 a.m. That was Amber Waves by 4 by Fate. Still on the phone with us, John Regan, bassist, co-founding member of 4 by Fate. John, thank you for being here with us this morning. You're welcome. I'm not going anywhere, Eddie. You can't get rid of me now. I'm, I'm just going to stay on the phone, so you got me. <laughs> that's, a, that's all right. It, it's, it's, it's Wait, a, I just want to say something, Eddie. Um, that song, obviously, you said it perfectly before you played it. But um, you know, I get a, I'm, I'm on I'm online more than I should be, and you know, unfortunately, like we spoke about, we lost a lot of uh, entertainment uh, icons recently. And uh, you know, when I when I I see they they deserve a lot of accolades, but all too often I see. People, whether they're actors, musicians, entertainers, sports figures, referred to as heroes. I I take issue with that. 
the men and women, the canine corps that served and are serving and will serve, to me, are the true heroes in this world. Everybody else is a celebrity. Uh, and I'm including not, not just military, I'm including the people that work as EMS workers, police, firemen, people who work in hospitals, people doing research to save lives. Those are the heroes to me. And I just want to personally thank each and every one that may be listening. They're the ones that make this world a better place. Uh, the people that get to entertain do so on the, by the graces of those that want to listen and buy our products. So, yeah, we're celebrities. Not, I'm not including me, but they're celebrities. But uh, uh, the true heroes are, are the ones I just mentioned, and can't thank them enough. Well, the appreciation goes both ways. When the, when the appreciation is shown to the veterans and these other heroes that you spoke about, the police, the fire, the researchers and EMS and all those other people, and when they're showed appreciation, they give their appreciation back to you guys. So it, it, it is a two-way street. And yep. we can't. We're thank... all riding around in the same big blue globe together. So every life touches so many others. We're all we're all part of a team, a big team called humanity. Absolutely. And a song like this that shows appreciation for us, and we appreciate you guys for recognizing stuff like that. So you know, well, like I said, it goes both you. ways. And you're one of my heroes anyway. Ah, bless your heart, Eddie. Back at you, my friend. John, thank you very much for letting me play some 4 by Fate. Due out June 3rd. You can pre-order on Amazon or on 4 by Um Yep, and you can also go to TheEndRecords.com. TheEndRecords.com, and they have a pre-order page. And pretty soon, I uh, believe very shortly, there's going to be some bundles on there with uh, with some 4 by Fate t-shirts. Um, etc. But uh, also, please join us on the Four by Fate Facebook page. We'd love to have you, and at fourbyfate.com. Eddie, I can't thank you enough, uh, not just for today, but for uh, your friendship and your support, and that of your beautiful, wonderful family. Uh, it's just, it's a joy to know you, and I'm glad we're living on Earth at the same time, my friend. Sentiments exactly right back at you and your wonderful family, and I just can't wait to um, get back, hear you guys out live when you guys uh, go out on tour to unsupported this album. When you get into the, and I'm already excited for the second album. You know, you guys are already writing for that. So, but my sentiments exactly, you and your great family and uh, the hospitality you shown us, the the loves and. Man, I can't thank you enough for everything that you've done for us. It's been a pleasure, Eddie, and uh, let's not let's not uh, spend too much time apart from each other, okay? Absolutely. Hey, come up here. We'll play some golf when the weather starts getting a little warmer. Yeah, get the snow off the golf courses up there, and I'll be up. <laughs> well, it's no, it's no, it's the snow's gone. It's the it's the frost delays now. Exactly. You got it. Okay. All right, my friend. Thank you so much. Big love to you and yours, and uh, stay relentless, buddy. We are relentless. John Regan, thank you very much. You're listening to WCCH 103.5. Here's John Regan one more time. He's going to do a call letter, and then we are going to pay a little tribute to uh, artists that we lost uh, this past week in Prince. You're listening to WCCH 103.5. Hi, I'm John Regan for 4 by Fate. You're listening to Rolling with Dice on 103.5 FM. WCCH, the best place to rock. <laughs> 